Hello, my name is Rob Peters from GE Healthcare, and I'd like to talk about MR image quality. The advantages of MR imaging are well known, and they include superior soft tissue contrast, 3D volumetric, the lack of ionizing radiation, and the potential for quantitative imaging. Unfortunately, there is an equally well known and long standing compromise that MR users deal with on a daily basis and that is the delicate balance between spatial resolution, signal to noise ratio, and scan time. Typically, the better you make one, the, other two, the worse the other two get, and every imaging facility deals with this balance differently, some placing more emphasis on higher spatial resolution, others on lower scan times, none able to have it all simultaneously. This balancing act is the dilemma of today's conventional MR image reconstruction. What if there was an alternative to conventional image reconstruction where the users had more freedom to choose between spatial resolution, SNR, and scan time? This has been the motivation between some of the artificial intelligence development at GE Healthcare over the past several years. Air Recon DL is a pioneering deep learning based MR image reconstruction technique that will change the way you think about MR imaging as it challenges that historical balancing act between image resolution, SNR, and scan time. The clinical benefits of Air Recon DL are probably best demonstrated with images. In addition to improving SNR and making images sharper, Air Recon DL can make lesions more conspicuous by improving the contrast to noise ratio while delivering shorter scan times. On the left is a standard conventional spine image showing normal Gibbs ringing noise from a very long scan time. On the right is Air Recon DL that is free of ringing, high in SNR, making the lesion easier to detect, all acquired in about half the scan time. Air Recon DL has no anatomy limitations. In this cardiac example, we see a clear improvement in the SNR, same scan time, same voxel volume, same raw data. Which one would you prefer to read? Take a close look at this ankle example. Conventional reconstruction on the left, Air Recon DL on the right, with a higher acquisition matrix and shorter scan time, and a lot more detailed information. Air Recon DL has now been installed at several M GE MR sites across the globe, and we're excited to see how our customers are using it to address their specific needs. One of the most compelling ways is to reduce scan time. Across a wide range of anatomies, we are seeing routine examination times reduce between 30 to 50% with images that are all with higher SNR and better image quality. This, these scan time savings can naturally translate to more clinical efficiency, such as added time for disinfection between patients, and of course, more patients being scanned per day. For even more focus on scan time reduction, with our carefully, carefully developed Air Recon DL hyperspeed imaging protocols, your scan times will soon be measured in the units of seconds, not minutes. Consider this routine spine exam in under 250 seconds. Minutes to seconds, millimeters to microns, Air Recon DL is transforming the way we think about MR. Balancing spatial resolution, SNR and scan time just became a whole lot easier images that are easier and faster to read. Imagine how Air Recon DL can benefit your imaging practice. We're going to be talking today with a clinical radiologist who has experience using Air Recon DL. But first, I'd like to highlight a few key facts and why GE Healthcare chose to focus on this AI development. There is a growing demand for MR and procedure volumes continue to rise. This leads to a need for more efficiency in patient management, setup, acquisition, and image interpretation. Streamlining the MR imaging experience for patients is a top priority, 
And, for example, today, there are still far too many repeat scans which contribute to a prolonged exam time. Airway Condiel provides freedom to balance spatial resolution, SNR, and scan time. This leads to shorter exam times, images that are easier and faster to read, a tool that's compatible across all anatomies, tolerance of variations, and images that appear directly at the MR console. Early adopter feedback has been overwhelmingly positive for this new technology. Feedback from 21 radiologists from 10 centers across six countries has observed the that images are sharper and more detailed, have improved lesion conspicuity, are easier and to read and lead to reduced eye fatigue, and may lead to greater consistency. I have the pleasure to introduce Dr. Daryl Sneak from the Hospital of Special Surgery in New York, a leading orthopedic hospital in the United States. The HSS has a long history of GE collaboration in the co-development of innovative MR orthopedic solutions, such as imaging around metal implants, quantitative characterization of cartilage, MR bone imaging, and peripheral nerve imaging, to name a few. Approximately two years ago, GE and HSS undertook a clinical evaluation study to examine how a new deep learning based MR reconstruction technique could impact their orthopedic imaging practices. This research prototype would later become what is known as Air Recon DL. Dr. Sneeg is the Director of Peripheral Nerve MRI at HSS and Associate Professor of Radiology at Whale Medical College of Cornell University. Today, he will share how Air Recon DL has benefited his MR nerve imaging practice, as well as introduced efficiency into HSS's MR orthopedic imaging. I can speak with great certainty that HSS has incredibly high clinical standards, and when it comes to MR imaging, high spatial resolution is never compromised. We will see how Air Recon DL has not only improved their image sharpness, but done so with shorter scan times. So I'd like to hand it off to Dr. Daryl Sneeg. Thank you so much, Rob, for that kind introduction and the ability to talk today about my experience with Air Recon DL. MR neurography has been recognized as being clinically significant only recently. MRI, however, has been recognized as a tool to image peripheral nerves since the early 1990s, but only recently has the impact of high-resolution 3T MR neurography been shown to impact diagnostic thinking and therapeutic patient management. Peripheral neuropathy is common, with approximately 3% prevalence in the general population and about an 8% prevalence in those individuals 55 and above. Recent software and hardware uh, technological advancements have enabled us to increase our clinical volume significantly between the years 2017 and 2020 as we're able to generate images that I think are clinically meaningful and help referring physicians manage their patients. Notice the blip during COVID and the uh, resurgence of the clinical volume since then. Precise localization of pathology with neuromuscular imaging or MR neurography is possible. And I'd like to illustrate one example in which we're able to detect pathology not only of the whole nerve itself, but individual fascicular bundles of the nerve that so essentially we're seeing with inside the nerve. So in this example, the green, yellow, and red arrows point to abnormal fascicular bundles of the median nerve above the elbow in this patient with anterior interosseous neuropathy. She's unable to oppose her thumb and index finger to perform such activities such as picking up a coin off a table or buttoning her shirt. This has enabled precise targeted microneurolysis of the nerve in which surgeons need only to open up a small portion of the patient's arm rather than the entire arm during an exploration surgery, if you will, and unravel or release those constrictions. And here she was able to nicely oppose her thumb and index finger following internal microneurolysis of the median nerve. And this has been reported by myself and my colleagues. However, the challenge with traditional two-dimensional MR neurography techniques is to acquire adequate spatial resolution within a clinically reasonable scan time. 
Our standard approach involves use of high performance gradients at 3T and high element surface coils. Parallel imaging techniques can be helpful, but typically incur SNR penalties due to undersampling and noise amplification. An AI-based image reconstruction is therefore attractive to decrease scan times peripheral nerve imaging. Just as one illustration in terms of approaches that we use, in April 2013, we see coronal T2-weighted fat-suppressed images from the same patient with a large peripheral nerve sheet tumor arising from her distal plexus. Here on the left, the use of an eight-channel cardiac coil, and on the right, in July 2020, with the use of 32-channel flexible coils. Air Recon DL is an AI-enhanced image reconstruction pipeline which operates on raw image data to produce high quality images and has been trained using a curated database of more than 10,000 high quality images. We performed a study which was previously presented at last year's RSNA. Our objective was to evaluate the performance of a new deep learning based MR reconstruction method that is DL Recon for the clinical evaluation of peripheral nerves. Our hypothesis was that significant agreement in clinically relevant outcome measures would exist between conventionally reconstructed standard of care or SOC MRIs and deep learning reconstructed, that is DL recon MRIs. We evaluated 28 subjects, 16 female, average age of 50, who underwent three Tesla clinical MRIs uh, using protocols that comprise at least one axial two-dimensional intermediate weighted fast spin echo sequence. The image data was then reconstructed using a conventional approach on your left and a DL-based reconstruction approach on your right. Notice the markedly more conspicuous fascicular architecture of the sciatic nerve at the level of the ischial tuberosity or the hamstring origins. We graded images using the following parameters. One, whether the radiologist could tell whether the reconstruction method was DL recon or standard of care. We evaluated outer epineurium conspicuity, fascicular architecture, pulsation artifact, as well as aliasing artifact and potential bulk or gross motion. We evaluated the grading differences between the DL recon and standard of care MRIs and found that for bulk and pulsation artifact, as well as outer epineurium conspicuity, there was no statistical significant difference for grading differences. However, there was a statistically significant difference in terms of the fascicular architecture between the standard of care reconstruction and the DL base reconstruction, noting that the DL base reconstruction shows much more conspicuous internal fascicular architecture in these two examples on the top row and the bottom row with the two different reconstructions in these patients with a spontaneous median neuropathies. And so following this project, we asked ourselves, can we apply DL recon more broadly to musculoskeletal imaging beyond the peripheral nervous system? And so these were a few preliminary examples using the same DL based uh, method to evaluate, for example, here, the elbow cartilage. Note the much more conspicuous superficial layer of the cartilage. Imaging of the thumb in this, what I call an ultra high resolution proton density image. Note the spatial resolution of 0.14 by 0.18 in plane, and the much sharper image on your right of the DL recon compared to the left image. In the wrist, using a prototype coil here, we're imaging at a six centimeter field of view. Notice the beautiful DL recon image on your right. The conventional image is pretty good, but notice that it's noisy and it's hard, at least in my mind, to be confident about the chondral detail on this coronal image. And so essentially what it comes down to, at least in my mind, and I think hopefully Rob, but you would agree as well, that there's a balance with imaging in terms of the contrast you're trying to achieve, the spatial resolution, and the acquisition time. And all these parameters without DL recon or without another reconstruction technique need to be balanced to achieve adequate image quality and efficiency. And my experience has been that DL recon was able to achieve high image quality and efficiency without compromising spatial resolution or contrast. So just to kind of go into this a little bit more detail, there's a challenge sometimes between SNR and spatial resolution. 
So here we're showing here a conventional, relatively low resolution coronal image of the knee, but high SNR. If we try to increase our spatial resolution, now going from an in-plane of 0.6 by 0.6 to now 0.4 by 0.4, then the image becomes noisy. But if we apply DL Recon, now at a 0.4 in-plane resolution, we now have adequate SNR with a high resolution acquisition. Conversely, if we look at adjusting acquisitions or the number of acquisitions or necks and, and contrast this with SNR and acquisition time, on the conventional on the image on the left, this is a 0.3 in-plane resolution image at two necks, approximately two and a half minutes. And you'll notice it's somewhat noisy. Notice the oblique horizontal tear of the posterior horn medial meniscus with a sp small uh, parameniscal uh, ganglion cyst along the capsular junction. And if we try to, what we believe is to uh, obtain adequate SNR in this experiment, we need to acquire a 20 minute long sequence using 16 necks. However, if we take our conventional acquisition at two necks and run it through our air recon DL algorithm now, now we've obtained an image of similar SNR, uh, at least visually, compared to the conventional image on your right in two and a half minutes time compared to a potentially 20 minute acquisition, which obviously no one in the right mind should run. Uh, another uh, similar theme but uh, slightly different is the use of Air Recon DL to obtain very large field of views, which typically uh, would result in penalties related to spatial resolution. So you, if you obtain a very large field of view, you have to go really, really high on your, uh, your matrix size in order to maintain your in-plane resolution. And this occurs uh, time penalty. So, so the conventional uh, acquisition, we're looking at the uh, gray toe MP joint, we see really uh, noisy image of the cartilage. But using air recon DL of these feet on the right and zooming up into that gray toe MP joint, we see very crisp, high SNR image. And so now I'd like to shift gears and describe how, you know, uh, following our initial experiments, applying to peripheral nerves and to a few joints, of really now being able to take air recon DL mainstream to HSS, and particularly in the COVID era. And this is on our GE Cigna Premier 3T system. We recently upgraded to the Cigna Works Air IQ Edition. So now we have in a product version uh, the DL Recon. And I'm very uh, excited to, to, uh, to say that we'll be able to run DL Recon as a product as well on uh, two systems in the main hospital that are going to be upgraded very soon. And I think what this has allowed us to do, as I'll show you in a moment, is to modify our protocols to really maintain or actually improve our spatial re resolution. And as Rob alluded to, we never want to compromise spatial resolution here at HSS, um, but actually speed things up. And this has been particularly important, uh, as everyone knows here in the COVID era, as we need to allow for a little bit more time to properly disinfect uh, all our uh, magnets, to maintain spacing uh, throughout uh, the day. So what we've done here, and this has really been uh, uh, assisted uh, work together with uh, Holly Blanick and GE and Maggie Fung, is take our existing protocols and apply Air Recon DL, modify some parameters, and actually reduce our scan time here in the shoulder by almost 40%. So here, our current protocol or our pre-existing protocol on the left and our slightly modified protocol on the right, notice a change in the 1.5 to 1 next. We're actually increasing our frequency encoding steps, so increasing our in-plane resolution. And notice much sharper visualization of the glenohumeral cartilage in the shoulder. Here, also note that there's a faster scan time in the Air Recon DL. And on your left, we see some motion artifact that is not present on the Air Recon DL image. Here in the knee, almost a 50% reduction in scan time. And again, beautiful visualization here of the femoral tibial cartilage. Similarly in the ankle, over 50% reduction in scan time. Nice visualization of the tibio tailor cartilage, very crisp on your right, as compared to the current, the, sorry, the previous protocol on the left. In the hip as well, similar theme with Air Recon DL. We see nice visualization of this patient, unfortunately, with bad uh, osteoarthritis and inciting acinovitis. 
So I'd just like to uh, wrap up by showing a couple of clinical cases. Those were volunteers that I just showed you. This is a 42-year-old female. It's kind of hot off the press images uh, over the last month in which we've been applying the DL uh, recon into our routine practice. Again, 42-year-old female with a recent anterior shoulder dislocation. So here we see a Hillsax lesion, stripping of the IGHL from the scapula. Notice the subtle labral tear as well on the actual image on your right. Here a 53-year-old man with advanced glenohumeral osteoarthritis. Notice the bulky loose bodies layering dependently within the axillary pouch. And also notice the visualization of a somewhat subtle tear, intrasubstance tear of the subscapularis superior fibers. 35-year-old male with the ACL reconstruction. I think this is really a beautiful example of when you obtain very high um, in-plane resolution with high SNR, we're able to nicely pick up this hyper-intense ACL graft, which represents the expected ligamentization of the tendon graft without disruption of its fibers. And here we also nicely visualize the suture line along the femur. This 45-year-old woman with chronic sacroiliitis, note the very sharp appearance of these chronic appearing erosive changes on both sides of the sacroiliac joints. And lastly, a 61-year-old male with degenerative lumbar spine disease. And you can take the same protocols, or I should say, sorry, you can take the same algorithm, and if you will, reduce exam times even further to under five minutes, really without sacrificing resolution or a signal in so-called hyperspeed protocols. Here in the knee, under five minutes with five acquisitions, and in the cervical spine, under five minutes again. Lastly, um, one exciting potential uh, application of Air Recon DL to 2D images is to obtain an isotropic or a near isotropic acquisition and create, uh, if you will, multiplanar reformations that appear to be acquired in a 3D plane, which is more conventionally what's used to cre create uh, these multiplanar reformations. So this is an example of a shoulder uh, in which the, uh, we've applied the DL Recon uh, to. Well, I'd like to thank you so much uh, again, Rob, for your the invitation to speak with you today about DL Recon. I'd like to thank uh, MR Lab at HSS and uh, with DL Recon or other techniques, we can even fit additional people in. I'd like to uh, thank Dr. Exun Tan who uh, helped me put this talk together today. Well, I'd like to thank Dr. Snake for his time and for educating us on his MR nerve imaging practice, but also for showing us how HSS is using Air Recon DL. We talked about how Air Recon DL can help users balance spatial resolution, SNR, and scan time, giving them much broader options and choices than ever before. Choice to go to higher spatial resolution, choice to go to super low scan times, which had been previously unattainable because there simply wasn't the SNR. Now there is. Your imaging now gets easier with Air Recon DL. So there are a few questions that are coming in, and Dr. Sneeg, if you have some time, maybe we can go through some questions and you can give some candid responses. Sure, I'd be happy to, Rob. Great. So one question that, that came through um, seems to be popular question is you've you've had considerable clearly some considerable experience with Air Recon DL in its early stage as a protocol prototype development. What do you see as the most promising feature in your practice beyond nerve imaging? Right. Um, I think as, as you alluded to is sort of multiple avenues or paths one could take uh, with Air Recon DL depending on his or her practice type. Um, as we mentioned in this talk, particularly at HSS, we're you know really careful about maintaining high spatial resolution, uh, image quality, uh, but now you know a little bit more cognizant now about uh, throughput uh, given distancing and COVID. Um, one of the next applications, at least, uh, that I'd like to kind of try out, and, and I, I alluded to this in my talk as well, is being able to image a much larger field of view. So currently, with you know, perif whether it's peripheral nerve imaging or we're evaluating a, a muscle strain that's perhaps at multiple sites throughout a leg, um, what we traditionally do is we'll take a surface coil 
and place it, for example, on the proximal to mid thigh at one station, then have the technologist move to the next station. And sometimes we'll have to go all the way from the hip to the ankle. So what I envision doing, and um, particularly with you know the air coils, these uh, multi-purpose array coils um, that we've uh, tried and we should be expecting to get them now, um, and they'll coincide nicely with the use of DL Recon, is to obtain a much larger field of view, run the sequence using a higher matrix, and this way we can save on a lot of scan time um, by not having to move from station to station. That, that's, that's a great, great application, uh, Dr. Sneeg. This is a deep learning based tool uh, built with artificial intelligence. And as such, we often hear of clinicians that are concerned about missing something, missing a lesion, missing something that could be clinically significant. Air Recon DL has been very well clinically road tested. There's been many studies performed on it. Do you, as a clinician, have any concerns with Air Recon DL? No, in fact, um, I think, uh, you know, our initial experiment applying to peripheral nerves kind of really showed that there was no compromise of image quality. I mean, in fact, the image quality improved, uh, as I mentioned, in terms of the uh, fascicular architectural detail. But essentially what we did is we took our standard protocols at the time, so we didn't modify anything. We took our standard protocols, were already imaging at a high spatial resolution, and ran them through either a standard of care reconstruction or a DL reconstruction. And what we showed is that there was tremendous equivalency. I know in some, um, at least for the fascicular architecture, DL recon actually showed improvements. But for all other parameters, things were very similar. Um, I didn't show, but we had extremely high inter-reader agreement for both uh, evaluations of the uh, standard of care and the DL reconstructions. Um, and uh, I think this initial experiment really showed me uh, as a clinician that we were not compromising image quality by adding on DL recon. Okay, that's, that's a great, great response. We're cer certainly it is comforting to know. I'm sure most clinicians will be comforted to know that um, there are no uh, considerable clinical concerns with, uh, with Air Recon DL. I have uh, one last question for you here, uh, Dr. Sneeg. You've been in the field of MR imaging, a practicing radiologist for quite some time. You've seen the evolution of, of MR over the past several years. How significant of an innovation is Air Recon DL? Have you seen any other developments that compare with it? Can you speak to that? Right. Um, sure, I certainly can. Um, so one of the things as a, you know, I call myself a peripheral nerve imager that I'm trying to do, uh, as you know, Rob, I'm trying to always try to push the envelope, trying to see if you can see a particular nerve in better detail or pick up on a nerve that perhaps we've never been able to see previously. And, you know, what I've noticed is, is that, um, you know, there's certain physics limitations and you pointed this out to me, Rob, um, you know, in a very kind way, as you normally do, is that you can only go so far. Um, with certain software due to physics limitations. Um, certainly, um, you know, high channel uh, coils help to accelerate imaging, um, but those take time to develop. And, uh, you know, we're currently imaging at 3T. And so, you know, I, I've felt recently that I've kind of optimized the current software, the current hardware, uh, but now that DL Recon comes on as a reconstruction method, again, using the raw image data, this provides just kind of opens up a whole new avenue. Um, I know that many other uh, institutions are probably working on reconstruction methods. I have yet to see uh, anything else um, that's kind of come out into product yet, though, um, in terms of applying it to uh, MR so far. Okay. Well, Dr. Sneak, thank you so much for your time. Um, we, we really appreciate you, you educating us and, and giving the, the uh, overview of how HSS is using Air Recon DL. My pleasure. Thanks for having me again and be well. 
Well, thank you for joining us as we heard about air recondyle as it's being used at the Hospital for Special Surgery. And a special thanks again to Dr. Daryl Sneak for telling us about MR neurography and how he's using it in his orthopedic practice. If you would like to learn more about air recondyle, please speak to your local GE representative to learn about how you could get it on your system. During the week of RSNA, GE will be hosting live scanning sessions so if, and we'll be showing real life examples of air recon DL in action. If you need more convincing, we'd be pleased to set up a one-on-one -on -one discussion.